Dish Nation. Welcome back to Dish Nation. I am here with the cast of the Ryan Murphy Show Hollywood. Guys, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We're the only Thank people you. in it. Yeah, yeah. No, just the three of us. It's just, it's just yeah. the three of you guys. Um, they cut Darren, everyone else. Darren, I'm going to start with you. I would like you to set this show up for me. So for people who don't know about what this show is about, kind of give me the little tease. Well, the first thing that I'll say, because it seems to hook everybody in, is I just say it's a show about 1940s Hollywood. Without going any further than that, unanimously across the board, people's reactions have been, oh, I just love that time. And like, even if I told them the stupidest plot ever, it seems to be such an ace up my sleeve. And ladies, kind of talk to me about the Hollywood hustle. How do you think the Hollywood hustle has changed over the years or has it not changed over the years? I mean, I think especially back then, I remember when I got the role, I did some so, many, so much amazing information about women in the 1940s, how the studios just owned them and they would mm -hmm. be given pills to stay awake during the day and then pills to fall asleep and pills to be on so that they would lose weight and um, they had to look a certain way. And I mean, so much of what Sam just said and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of these women ended up having very tragic lives, I think, because they had so little control over their own lives and, and things weren't easy. And then I just thought about people like Dorothy Dandridge, who then on top of that, being a black woman in Hollywood, she's experienced so much racism. I mean, at the height of her career, you know, she wasn't allowed into hotels or Mr. Hattie McDaniels, who when she won an Oscar was only then allowed into the room of the ceremony. I mean, it's, it's mind boggling what these people had to go through at that time. And it makes you so grateful for them for paving the way for us. Okay, so first of all, I guess my first question is for Jim, since you are a beloved show business icon. <laughs> what are the three things that people need to have to make it in Hollywood? A willingness to play, um, a, a determined drive to keep going no matter what's flung your way, and, um, an ability to work well with others, and many other things. Do we have what it takes, Jim? Both of you are very talented in all three of those ways, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm sure, get recognized for being yourselves, but who do people often think you are that you're not? Like, who do people come up to you and you're like, oh, I loved you, and blah, 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 and it's totally not you? My favorite one for when the show began, uh, for a long time, I, I took pictures with so many people as Jon Snow, <laughs> which I absolutely love. I was working in uh, Japan recently, and a woman who knew my name and I was and was working with me daily, she pulled out her phone one day and said, "Oh my goodness, I saw a poster of you today," and it was Emma Stone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Finish this sentence for me. You know you're in Hollywood when? <laughs> you drive past the line at Pink's. And then the Paramount lot, which is truly one of the, I think Paramount is the most beautiful lot. That was my first lot. You know you're in Hollywood when <coughs> you're in a sex scene with Patti LuPone. <laughs> That's when I knew I was in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is a sex scene with Patti LuPone like? She's oh my a, God! Let me tell she's you something. She's an icon. <laughs> this sex scene was so outrageous and so sexy and so. And they were on Dylan the whole time. Glamorous <laughs> and so incredible that they had to cut I'm... it out. <laughs> <laughs> I love the show. I thought it was. Incredible. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Oh, Thank you. Thanks, Dish Nation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm working with my two undercover lovers here. You know, my two boys that I've had, uh, or I'm their girl that I, I had sex scenes with, and, and I, when I read that, I, it was like a no-brainer. I'm taking the part. So it was a lot of fun, and it's not sexy at all. I said that Dylan and I got finished with it. We got in the tra the bus to go back because we were on location. I went. It was oddly unsexy, even though Dylan was, man, was kissing Dylan and 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 he was on top of me and it was kind of hot and he was behind me. David was behind me and it was craw crawling up my leg and it wasn't hot. <laughs> Whoa! I'm I gotta take a sip of water, Patty. Patty, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not in your basement. <laughs> no. Why are how you do you in know? The basement. <laughs> I should have done this from the basement. The basement. Yeah. The basement. 
Um, okay, David, I'm going to start with you. And I guess my first question is, um, what are some similarities that we see between Hollywood now and yesterday in the show? How are they similar? How are they different? Uh, I think, well, they're similar in the, in the way that things never change, which is that people come to Hollywood, you know, with big ideas and big dreams. Uh, and then more often than not, they're, they're slapped in the face with, uh, with the reality of rejection and hard work over long periods of time. Um, and uh, that's certainly what my uh, character experiences. I certainly have not experienced them taking a sharp left turn into uh, a, <laughs> a full service gas station where you're uh, being rented out to illustrious people like uh, Miss Pollan's character. Um, so maybe that's one way that, that it's different, but maybe I just haven't seen that side of Hollywood, uh, uh, you know, in uh, these days. Jeremy, what's been your funniest Hollywood moment so far? Because, you know, there's some interesting moments that happen in this town and when you're working. What's been one of your more memorable Hollywoody type moments? Um, Hollywood moment. I was at a restaurant and all of a sudden people were like looking in my direction and I was like, okay, this is my moment. Like someone's noticing me, like, let me like watch the way I'm eating or whatever. And then like later on, somebody thought I was Chris Brown. Like, it was just very unclear and confused. <laughs> then I was like, I'm not They're like, what, what do you do? And then I'm like, well, I, I do do something. And then it was just very awkward and, you know, um, very interesting. But that was, that was my introduction to a Hollywood, Hollywood moment. He's not Chris Brown, people. Oh, he is not I'm Chris Brown. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. Have oh. I mean, Jim, when you when you came to this town, you know, fresh, wide kid from Texas, what were your initial impressions of it? Um, well, I guess they were twofold. I felt very excited and very um, eager, and there were so many opportunities. I mean, it's one of the great things about being in Hollywood is that there's there really is, even though it's hard to get the work. There's a lot of work and there's more now than there even was 10 years ago, but, um, but also it's very intimidating and, and you can only prepare so much. It's a very trial by fire type of business and career to be in. And you, you don't know from one situation to the next it's gonna be. It takes, it's taken me at least many, many years to get comfortable with the amount of unknowns with every new day on a new set. Um, okay, so this show obviously is Hollywood. I have some Hollywood trivia. So just yell out what you think the answer is. Just feel free, no social cues, just scream out the answer. They're, they're pretty okay. easy. Okay, first question is, what was the first feature length animated movie that was ever released? What was that? Mickey, talk about Mickey? No. So, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Close, same company, Jim, same company. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Feature length. Feature length. Mickey Bambi? Mouse. Just kidding. Snow White. Snow oh. White. Is it Snow White? Really? Snow White. Yeah. Snow White. Snow White. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> okay. Based based on inflation. So take inflation into account. What is the highest grossing film of all time? Star Wars. Okay. We Titanic. have Titanic. Titanic. Star Wars. And what do you say? I said Gone with the Wind. Ah, you're right. It's gone with the wind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's made three point seven billion dollars. Jesus, That's not bad. So not bad. Scarlett <laughs> O'Hara, I hope she got residuals out of that. Even though I guess she's passed away now, but you know it is. Um, okay, just just wrapping up. Are there any? What advice would you give to people who are struggling in this business, especially now in the time of? quarantine, obviously you guys are all very successful, but any words of wisdom you would give to someone who's kind of struggling a little bit right now? That's deep. I'm going deep, yeah. Jim. Going deep here. You're going deep. I think believe in yourself. That's, you know, yeah. it, might be it might be cheesy, but uh, I think it's important. I think for me, um, a lot of times we are, we think we need to look up for the opportunity, but I found if you look around, 
sometimes there's more than you actually think there is, whether it be a community of friends that you already have. Um, I found I've been most fulfilled with work that I've created with just a small group of people that feel like family. Um, so as you are, you know, auditioning or doing whatever you're, you know, you're, you're doing, um, that has helped me in that process to not feel so alone. Um, cause yeah. I think once hearing so many no's, you start to wear that no, thinking it's a no on you and not just a no of, oh, you're not right for this opportunity or this project. So to kind of heal that temporarily, it's finding creative and, um, you know, extracurricular activities to be a part of that make you feel good. Um, you being your heart. Thank you guys so much. 